what has spooked the markets is all, or you know, since morning has been the global sentiment and uh, specific tweets with regards uh, to the trade talks by uh, President Trump and the fact that Friday could be the day where another $200 billion worth of Chinese goods could attract tariffs as much as 25%. Bring in a global voice then, Richard Harris of Port Shelter Investment Management is joining us on the show this afternoon. Uh, Richard, thanks very much for taking out the time. Let's get in a sense from you as to, you know, this is definitely a big shakeup in terms of the uh, global equities. And, you know, one tweet that has been put out by the president has really uh, probably, the sentiment has turned around for the worse. And just a few days ago, in fact, there were talks of the trade conversations going on as per plan. Uh, yes, I mean, it is rather confusing, but this should be part of the uh, Donald Trump playbook, you know, which is to keep your opponent guessing, and especially in terms of negotiation. Um, I suspect the talks uh, haven't been going as well as they might, um, uh, partly because, you, you know, when you hear reports of trade talks and this sort of thing, they're typically not going to be negative. Um, most of the talk was likely to be positive. Um, but behind the scenes, it's quite likely they haven't been going as well as Donald Trump would like. And um, maybe he's just woken up in the middle of the night and had a fit of peak and, and fired off this message, which is actually quite serious. The other aspect, obviously, that could, you know, uh, probably uh, spook the markets is what's been happening to crude oil. And there, too, uh, we've got uh, President Trump playing a major role uh, in spooking sentiment. So uh, while on one hand we're talking about, you know, Saudi Arabia and, you know, them taking over the shortfall that comes in from Iran, the, the, the problem lies with what happens thereafter and whether or not after filling the gap of Iran, Saudi Arabia has any incremental capacity left to deal with issues if they do arise from Libya, Venezuela. So all these issues kept in mind, uh, crude oil being another major factor that equity market watchers are keeping an eye out on. Well, I think it's one factor, but um, uh, it, it's you, you know, Donald Trump is not really talking about joined up uh, discussion here. You know, he'll say one thing about one market and one thing about another. Um, uh, now, China and Hong Kong have reacted quite strongly today, but other markets haven't reacted quite as badly. When I last looked, Europe was down around 1% or so. Um, remember that the market is now getting used to Donald Trump's tweets. They're now getting used to the fact that he barks more than he bites, um, and he has to in this situation. So there must be some question about whether the markets are going to fully take this on board. Um, if you take 25% fully on board, I think that's really quite a negative feature. You know, 10% can be hidden in exchange rate movements, in uh, companies taking a hit on the margin, this kind of thing. 25% is inescapable. Um, and it's also quite a strong declaration of war in trade terms. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty bad. I rather suspect that the oil price is going to follow that as a piece of news rather than supply and demand factors in the short term between uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia and Venezuela and these other places. So I think we should look at the oil price really as being a function of what's happening uh, with the trade talks first. Uh, and lesser so than a, a supply and demand situation, which after all is fairly constant. But, you know, uh, your point well taken, but uh, when the barking can do this amount of damage, you know, you don't need a bite coming in that can do worse uh, for the overall markets. But just to get in a sense from you, uh, emerging markets and the flows have been strong so far. Does this hamper that in terms of the foreign money? Uh yeah, I, I, I think it does. You know, this is quite a serious uh, issue, I think, all in all. Um, uh, and I think that the bark is quite serious, and central bankers, of course, find that out for themselves. Um, but I think one of the issues is that um, uh, we are going to see um, uh, a real concern with this 25%. Um, I suspect Friday will come and go uh, without the 25% being imposed. You know, Trump will find another reason to delay it. Um, but I think we should look at it as part of his negotiating tactics. He is willing to do it. 
uh, if that that happens. But I think that generally uh, it's really a threat rather than something serious. But the markets have to take it at face value. And at the moment, I think they're taking it reasonably at face value with some discounting. Okay. All right. Um, Richard, just one final question. Do you reckon that global commodities could remain under extended pressure if indeed there is no resolution uh, coming about uh, US and China in the near term? Well, I think obviously the danger with the US and China is that it's going to impact global trade and global trade and global economies will be affected and that too is going to uh, hinder the commodity uh, situation. Now, uh, of course, for India, this is generally quite good as, a, as an importer of commodities. Um, but of course, slowing demands uh, elsewhere in the world are not good. Uh, you know, that is an issue. So I think that really we're in a situation where um, uh, the markets are in some turmoil. Uh, they're not much different than they were last week. But broadly, we've seen a very big rally. We're knocking around all-time highs in the U.S. There probably needs to be some excuse for them to come back. And I think we'll see markets come back, and I think we'll see buying opportunities come through. Uh, but I wouldn't be buying for a couple of weeks.